I think uh, I can improve on everything. Uh, if you say I'm good finishing, uh, I can uh, improve my finishing a lot. And uh, yeah, everything. I can become faster, so I can improve that. I can become stronger, so I can improve that. Uh, but um, if I should improve one thing, that is to uh, don't be injured. Erling Haaland, all right? We all know he's probably going to be the biggest transfer this summer. Available for 75 million euros from a release clause from Borussia Dortmund. Every top team in Europe is going to want him. And Ralph Rannick has confirmed what we all knew. The Manchester United are going to be in the market for a striker this summer. So in this video, I want to talk about Erling Haaland and his transfer to Manchester United. I want to look at the pros. I want to look at the cons. And we're going to be speaking about Haaland. We're going to be speaking about the wages. And we're going to be speaking about Raiola. We've got to take everything into context in this situation. Look, before I do begin, though, please, if you would consider subscribing to United People's TV, come on, go down there, hit that subscribe button, get involved, hit the notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live so you don't miss this bang average content. But look, Let's talk about it and let's run through what the story is so far. So this is what Ralph Rannick said in his press conference ahead of Southampton about Manchester United's search for a new striker. He said, this is obvious. Cavani's contract is running out in the summer and the club needs the best possible centre forward. And that's an important sentence in this whole thing. The best possible centre forward. This is an obvious one. I think everyone is aware of that. We've got 37-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo. We've got 35-year-old Cavani, who's going to be leaving at the end of the season. We've got Martial, who's on loan to Sevilla, and will probably likely leave on a permanent deal. That means we'll have Ronaldo and Rashford. And Rashford's not really a striker. You could throw a Langer in there if you really want to try and throw him in as a centre forward, but he's not a centre forward. Manchester United need a striker. And with the Erling Haaland story, you can reverse back to December if you want to look where the links really started. When reports came from Manchester Evening News, sorry, saying that Haaland spoke to Alf... No, sorry, that uh, Ragnick spoke to... Uh, Erling Haaland's father, Alf, that was a confusing sentence, uh, about a potential move. Now, in the same way that we all thought Manchester United had maybe had more of a chance of signing Haaland because of the Solskjaer links, obviously Haaland came through at Molde, the same can be said really about Ragnick and Haaland because Ragnick was the sporting director at Red Bull Salzburg when Haaland moved there from Molde. And it was at Red Bull Salzburg where he sort of announced himself as the basically the best striker of the next generation coming through. And Haaland, we all know about the numbers. I don't need to tell you the numbers. I haven't even got the numbers here, so I don't actually know him. <laughs> uh, I don't need to tell you how good he is. He is a phenomenal goal scorer. And I'm not sure about you, but I get proper old school Ronaldo vibes by watching him. Just the amount of power whilst having grace at the same time, it's kind of rare in football. And he really does have it all. And there's going to be an absolute free-for-all medley. I don't know how to describe it, but it's going to be madness looking at what happens with him this summer. Because he's available for 75 million euros, he's massively undervalued for the player that he is. But because of this man, and this is where the discussion has to start, Mina Royola is not his agent. His agent is his dad, Alpha Inga. And by the way, the fact that Roy Keane, that tackle, that won't, that won't affect this situation. Alpha Inga has already said that. He goes, I will do what is best for my son's career. If that so happened to be a move to Manchester United, he wouldn't step in the way of that. And by the way, Roy Keane didn't end his career, just to let you know that he played football after that. Anyway, back to this story, though. Mina Raiola, we know he is the big problem because he's involved and the money that is involved in this situation, that's where we've really got to speak about. Look at that. So 75 million, euro, 75 million euros is his release clause. We scroll down there. Look at the wages. Uh, in excess of half a million pounds a week. Mind-blowing. And other figures have suggested it could be upwards, up towards a million pounds a week. Is any player worth a million pounds a week? Maybe prime Messi, maybe prime Ronaldo. But 21, 22-year-old Erling Haaland? That's a, hell of, that, I mean, that's a hell of a lot of money. That's, that's one way to describe it. It's, it's an insane amount of money. And I'll tell you one thing that I was going to speak about this a little bit later on, but I'll bring it up now. This still stings me. And this is what I, this is my biggest concern, really, about Erling Haaland. My concern wouldn't be about whether Erling Haaland would fit in his Raiola again. My concern wouldn't be about whether Erling Haaland would fit in at Manchester United. That's not the issue. My issue is when we signed Alexis Sanchez, it threw Manchester United's wage structure, not out of the window, but because we signed him, the only reason we signed him was because we offered him more money than anywhere else. He was a mercenary. He came in and he just, he retired basically as soon as he signed that contract. His announcement video with the piano was the best thing about him. 
does that mean that Manchester United shouldn't should avoid Erling Haaland is the question I want to ask you. And I think the main talking point of this video, because because of Mina Raiola, we all know the problems that we've had with uh, Paul Pogba. Not really too many problems with Ibrahimovic as such. But when it comes to Mina Raiola, there's a, there's a certain element, a side story, a circus that you have to take into account. And Erling Haaland has that. Now, does United's previous failures at signing big money signings on big wages... Does that mean we should avoid Raiola? Does that mean we should avoid Erling Haaland altogether? Or would that be Manchester United missing out on quite possibly... I mean, actually, no, it's not impossibly. He is the best possible centre-forward. So if we're, listen, if we're listening literally to what Ralph Ragnick said, then Erling Haaland is that striker. He is the best possible centre-forward that Manchester United could sign this summer. But the fears I have would be... Obviously, we were stung about what happened with Alexis Sanchez and what happened there. I'm not saying that the Haaland situation will reflect that, but United don't really have a good track record of spending big money on big signings. And bear in mind, right, we need a player like Fabinho. And that is the priority for Manchester United this summer. Can we realistically expect Manchester United to go out into this transfer window and first and foremost, and I say this unequivocally now, Man United's priority this summer is a defensive midfielder. Man United's priority last summer was a defensive midfielder. And I stood by that point and I've been proven correct. It's the missing piece for this season. So we need a Fabinho type signing. Who's, who could that be? I don't particularly know at this time. If I'm being completely honest, there's quite a few names on the list and there's no one really standing out as the main candidate. But a Fabinho type signing is what's going to transform this team. Of course, a new goal scorer, a proper centre forward uh, that can be here for five, six, maybe three, four, five, six, however many years. We need that as well because Cavani's leaving and Ronaldo's 37 and he can't play every week. The, the pace of the game is getting a little bit ahead of Ronaldo's legs. That's the way I would describe it. But United really going to go out and sign a Fabinho type signing for what? 40, 50, 60 million and then go and spend 75 million on Erling Haaland and all the wages that would be involved in that. Is that realistically going to happen? I don't know. But if you look here at the... Team that we, I mean, Popper probably won't be here next season, so you could put him out for someone else. I don't know if you want to put, I don't know, put him out for Fred for the time being, and we don't know who McTominay is going to be, so it's slightly irrelevant. But Haaland inside this four-three-three system that we've seen now under Ralph Ragnick, and we would see under probably Ten Hag and Pochettino as well. We would have we had variants and varieties of it. I, I don't think it would be too much of an issue to consider the fact that this guy would fit into that system perfectly. Erling Haaland, when you watch him play, he's so powerful. He's so physical. He could run into the space here and burst in behind. He, there's certain strikers that can play in an isolated number nine role and play it well. Erling Haaland is possibly the best example of that that you've got now. Certainly the best example of it that we could buy in the summer. And again, reverting back to that statement from Ralph, if we're going to sign the best possible centre forward this summer, then it has to be... Erling Haaland, surely, right? Jesus, that was annoying me. It has to be Erling Haaland. There, there, there isn't another... Uh, uh, let me know in the comments below. Who, who, who do you think could be a, a comparable potential signing to Erling Haaland in terms of the quality that he could bring to this team? Because if it's the best, best possible, and we're going out there, you know, to use Gary Neville's quote, our oh, United need the best in class, surely Erling Haaland is the best in class. Who else, who else could come near him? But it's, it's, the, it's the bigger question around it. Do Manchester United want to be dealing with Menoraiola? Is it worth, is the juice worth the squeeze? Finally, I've got a metaphor, whatever it is, a metaphor. I've got one of those right, I didn't get it wrong. When you, when you look at our starting 11 and what it could be with Erling Haaland in, it, oh my God, it makes you horny. It, 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 he, whoever signs him, Real Madrid, United, Bayern Munich, I don't know, they are going to get a goal scorer that is 30 goals a year, guaranteed, Every year he stays injury free, guaranteed. And that is a rarity in the modern game. He would be like a Ruben Nistelrooy type signing. Arguably one of my favourite ever United players. And mate, if, if, you, if you had the privilege of watching United play when Ruben Nistelrooy was in his pomp and he had those three, was it three years he scored more than 30, 35, three or four years? He was incredible. Just you give him the ball and he's going to score. Every time he scored, he, just, he, he had such a confidence in his ability to find the back of the net. Erling Haaland is going to be that type of striker. The striker that's, that Ralph Radnick brought to Red Bull Salzburg. 
the striker that we know has been breaking all the records so far. And if we're looking at the best possible centre forward, can we really ignore Erling Haaland simply because of Mona Raiola? You let me know what you think in the comments below. I think it's a really interesting talking point. Can we really just ignore the idea of Haaland because of the circus that's around it and that man there? And we all know exactly what that man he likes. That is all he cares about. Cash, money, baby. But I tell you what, if we care about signing someone who's scoring 30 plus goals a year, then we should be in for Erling Haaland. That's my opinion on it. And that's my that's my talking points on it. And I want you to let me know what you think in the comments below. As I said at the start of the video, please, if you would consider subscribing, if you did enjoy the video, hit that subscribe button down there. Hit that notification bell as well. Get involved in the channel. But let me know what you think about the Erling Haaland situation in the comments below. Take it easy.